Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Recently on my channel, I shared two strikes and a hit for some card projects that went a little off and then we brought it home and in the end we ended up, well, with something cute. So many of you gave me so many great comments on that video. The number one connecting thread in all of those comments, Jennifer McGuire. I'm sure most of you do know who she is and you do follow her work, but nine out of 10 times, if I'm confused on something, I go to Jennifer's channel, I type in her search box and I find what I'm looking for. Who am I kidding? It's 10 out of 10 times. So today, after watching Jennifer's video, I'm gonna share with you what I did after I learned it from her. She is a veritable Wikipedia of crafting, seriously. The fact that she's my friend, bonus. My WWJD video, what would Jennifer do, is coming up next. So this is the card that I wanted to take another stab at, and I'll be sure to pop a video up to the two strikes and one hit, or I can't remember what I called it, but after watching Jennifer's video, I wanted to take a different approach to embossing folders. And that's what I'm going to do today. First things first, her idea of just putting your, your label on your folder, okay, didn't even think of that. This is going to help me when I want to remember, oh, which side is the embossed side? Which side is the debossed side? Once that label's on, I'm, I'm not gonna confuse this. At least I don't think I will. So now I'm gonna do what Jennifer did. And I'm going to put a link right up, little card up there in the right to her video, the one that I watched that made me stop, drop, and well, come down and do what you see here. Got the Tim Holtz glass media mat out because that's what Jennifer uses. Now I have the mini media mat and I hardly ever use it. And to be honest with you, I never even think to do things like this, right? I think we get in our little, it's not a rut, right? I think it's called a comfort zone. That's what it's called. And I would not think to do this. So I'm smushing down, like dragging that color, my three colors here. And I wasn't even sure if I was doing this right, but I grabbed my brayer, right? Just like Jennifer and started going back and forth. I started to blend them that way. And then I thought, no, I think, yeah, just do as she does. So that's what I did. Kept going back and forth until it looked a little smooth. And I wanted to have that transition from pink. So I'm darkening that up a little, right? Getting it a little darker up there, bringing in again, a little more orange. Yeah, still don't know what I'm doing, but we're going for it. So back and forth little bit darker and loading up the brayer. And I kind of thought, well, you know what? That looks pretty good. Let's uh, bump it up a little more. You see, here's the thing. You just don't know until you get into it. And I think in my mind, I thought this was going to turn out a lot darker at the top, right? So that's why I kept layering in the pink. But once I had it on, I thought, all right, you're, you're got, you got to do it. You got to go for it. So I opened up the folder for the nice smooth side, right? That is actually the deboss side. And I just started rolling on the color. But now I don't know if you'll notice this, for someone who wanted to preserve that pink into orange, I probably should not have gone from top to bottom because now essentially what I'm doing, I'm preserving the pink to orange, but I'm doing it from side to side. Does that make sense? You can see how on the right, it's a little more pink. We're gonna, we're gonna switch it up on the next one. But the color is on, right? I'm gonna take my cardstock and I too, just like Jennifer, I've got the Brutus Monroe, not your mama's cardstock in alabaster. Now for my sandwich, I am following what she did. I've got a folded piece of cardstock. This is just 80 pound cardstock. I'm putting on my metal adapter plate and then I'm going to put this embossing folder right onto the platform and run it through. Now, to my surprise, it was really hard for me to crank this through. I have wrist issues in general, but it definitely added more pressure. And when I popped this out, number one, that looked really cool, but I was kind of surprised. I thought it would be darker. And yet at the same time, I absolutely love how it pops with the white flowers. Cause that was not my goal in my two strikes video, right? I wasn't, I wasn't going there at all because I had just done full on ink blending on a cardstock, but this is cool. Now, the one thing I wanted to show you after one run through with that sandwich, my, my folder got really warped. So I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna try something different the next time. 
but I am also going to try the smaller brayer. Now I've got this little Tim Holtz Distress brayer and I thought maybe if I use a smaller brayer that I can control where the color goes and this time I'm actually going to go from side to side instead of top to bottom in the hopes that we actually get that top to bottom blend. Now this brayer seemed to handle the ink a little differently, like it looked like it smushed it a little differently, but still it allowed me to take that smaller area and have a little more control when adding that pink ink because I really did want to try to get this to have the pink at the top, more orange in the bottom. There I just went direct to pad, right? I thought maybe that'll be even better. And it did, it totally showed up even more. But for the rest of the folder, I'm just going back to the other brayer and running that across. But you can see right on the folder, that beautiful transition of color, I loved it. Working my way across, my mat kept, or my folder kept sliding underneath the mat. But other than that, we're, we're just going, we're going forward. Bumping up the marigold, the dried marigold at the bottom, and again, a little more pink. So the thing is, I, I think with these colors, I really envisioned they would pop and be a little darker. But in the end, I kind of like the softness. So we're repeating, right? Popping down a piece of cardstock. And this time, I'm going to get my sandwich ready. All right, get that plate in there. But I thought to myself, why don't we just go back to the sandwich I had used in my two strikes video, which is pull out the folded cardstock. Cause I just wanted to see the difference. So I pulled it out completely, right? Held that in place and ran it through. And it's of course much easier. The pressure is much less. And you know, it does make a difference here. And as you'll see, right? When I open this up, it's just a little less smooth. See that? I'll bring the other one in here too so you can see. But I thought, oh, I like that the pink's at the top, but it's a little less smooth and pressed down, and that's probably from the difference in the pressure. So, is it the Goldilocks and the three bears, the third bear found the best? I don't, I don't know. I'm mixing my, my stories here, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a third card. This time I just went right back to the other brayer and went across, right? side to side instead of you know the top to bottom that I had done in the first one and I'm changing my sandwich yet again I'm just gonna cut that piece of cardstock in half and go with one sheet of cardstock and a metal adapter plate which I think for me might be the perfect sandwich eh, hard to say popping that down placing it in and running it through I was a little crooked with the placement of the, of the paper but you know what Who's keeping track, really? Running that through, and this time, instead of going back and forth, I just went through once, and honestly, that's that's really nice. Although, you can see at the bottom, it didn't really press the ink down into the background behind the lower foliage quite in the same way. Actually, that's not bad. But here I, I have three pieces to play with and I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll start with one and maybe I'll do all three. And then I decided, let's do all three. So I thought it would be fun to do a little splattering. So for splatter number one, I've got my fan brush, just dipping it into some water. And I love fan brushes for this because they give you the tiniest little splotches. It really is amazing how easy it is to flick on the little tiny splotches and then I just did the clear water you know dab dabbed it off there and I'll show you what that looks like I thought that was pretty but I didn't want to waste the ink that I had there over on the sides so getting the fan brush wet and then just picking up some of that color from the top and again tapping it on and it gives you just the tiniest little specks I absolutely love this brush I think I learned about doing this with a fan brush from watching uh, Lavinia Stamps, and I'll, I'll pop a link below too to their channel because I would have never thought to get a fan brush, and look at that, isn't that cool? And then for the third panel, what I'll do is I'll just pick up some color from the yellow area and the orange area. Again, get the water, smoosh it around, and then I'll flick this on to 
the panel. And again, it gives me that nice little teeny tiny flicks, adds a little interest, and we are, we are flick happy here. And this is looking fabulous. Isn't that cute? So now let me show you the three finished cards that I created with these panels. There they are. And on the right, that was the first one that I said I was going to work with the darker at the top. And what I did was I just glued it right down to a white card base with that glorious margin, took the shadow layer from a set called Scripty Hugs, and I used some Peach Bellini cardstock two layers to cut the word hugs out. But isn't that nice? Got that little dimension. For the middle card, I just used Peach Bellini, and that is a Gina K cardstock, Gina K Designs. But I thought it worked really well with the colors here. And then I just did the hugs a little differently with white words on the Peach Bellini shadow. And for the third card, I just finished that out so simply with a little sentiment strip. I think this is minimal. I think this is wonderfully simple. But there you go. I am so excited that I started here and I thought, what would Jennifer do? Well, I have three cards that now answer that question. So remember, if at first you don't succeed, go to YouTube, type in Jennifer McGuire Inc. and the world is your oyster. Thanks Jennifer for being such a fantastic source of inspiration. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.